the states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. fraud. In the states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. The following goes beyond the show and beyond the gram to bring you all the fraud that's fit to be uncovered. This is the Fraudcast, and now here's your Fraudcaster and the woman behind Frauded by TLC on Instagram, Katrina. Hello and welcome to the Fraudcast. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a lot of good stuff coming your way for this uh, episode of the Fraudcast. We have an interview later on with Jason Hitch of season two. It was Jason and Cassia. And we've got a lot of other good tea coming up. But first, let's everybody say hello to Hanakawa, who's here hello. to join me again. Again. <laughs> again, and still, can we have a very, very fun announcement that I'm very excited about is that Hanakawa has agreed to join me as an official co host of the Fraudcast. Get a little tea time clap. <laughs> So I'm very excited about that, and I hope that you guys are too. We've been listening to your feedback, and um, isn't it kind of crazy the way uh, the universe works out sometimes? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think most people like, if we can start like them just knowing me as the co-host and not, you know, the ex-wife, I think we can slowly push that, you know, <laughs> until he comes back on a new season. I mean, if he comes back on a new season, if then. Allegedly. <laughs> If allegedly, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, here at the Fraudcast, you can uh, find us on social media. I am Frauded by TLC on Instagram, and you can also find me on Twitter. I also now have a YouTube where I'm saving all my Frauded Night Lives. My YouTube is Frauded by TLC on YouTube. You guys have been asking my Friday Night Live sessions that are called Frauded Night Live, <laughs> where we talk all the tea. It's like an hour plus of fun gossip and, and all the, the good stuff that has happened that week. A lot of you guys have been asking to where I, where I can save those. And so I finally got a place to save them. So those will be going up on the YouTube. And if you want to join us for that, that's usually 9.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Instagram. You can also find us on Facebook. Our Facebook group is The Fraudcasters. So just go ahead and search for that and you'll find us. Answer a couple questions. There's no right answer and we'll let you write in and you can join in on all the fun live, live watch threads and all kinds of other fun stuff. And you are... And I am, sorry, I was still stuck <laughs> on you uh, having a YouTube because, you know, I'm driving back when you usually do that. So, like, for um, one part of the freeway, I, like, miss <laughs> a chunk of it. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, <laughs> darn. Um, but you can find me on Instagram. That's the only place I live right now. Um, cat, uh, at cactus underscore fruit underscore juice. And, uh, yeah. Well, there we go. And uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff for you this episode. So thank you guys for joining us. Let's get right to it. Um, so we have our social media roundup. And so I'll start with this one because I was actually cooking when this happened. Uh, Evelyn was actually live and she was discussing her whole situation with Laura. Um, and I know we all know that uh, Laura is in Ecuador right now. And there was some question of how long she was going to stay there. Evelyn said that she has actually renewed her visa. She'll, she'll at least be there for another three months. Uh, the big question is, how is she going to support herself while she's there for three more months? Because Laura's not actually living with Evelyn, right? So what is she doing? Where is she living? How is she supporting herself? She's not living with Evelyn. Apparently, she's living in an apartment. Um, and and even Evelyn doesn't know how she's paying for the rent because the rent is pretty expensive by Ecuadorian standards. Um, and Laura can't work there because she can't speak the language. So it's a big question to it's a big question. Um, and then she was also talking about uh, Laura's interesting. Uh, what would you call this? Not even a relationship rendezvous with somebody that Danielle knows from Danielle and Muhammad. And how they were apparently fighting over mystery man <laughs> who came to visit him in Ecuador, or in Ecuador. Yeah, so and do you remember, no 
Yeah, well, do you remember my interview with Danielle and she talked about this a little bit that there's this she wouldn't her friend and she had asked me to find some information on 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 Laura because she wanted to present it to her quote unquote friend to let him know that Laura wasn't very good. I think were Danielle's exact words. <laughs> so <laughs> she wouldn't go into more detail about why she was so concerned that she was spending the money on a private investigator and everything else that she was wow. doing to try to prove to her friend that Laura was up to no good. Yeah. But well, she was like, it was definitely a a love triangle. Interesting. And uh, her interest in him. I, I mean, it's really weird because I guess the description from what Evelyn says is that Danielle actually introduced this guy to Laura and knew he was going to go visit her, but the whole time was blowing up his phone. I don't know. <laughs> it's such a weird situation. I was just trying to wrap wow. my head around what the heck was happening. But apparently he went back home. Laura wasn't interested. And um, he's with neither of them now. But there was a bit of a tug and war. So Danielle uh, and Laura were fighting over the same man. Yes. That's a sentence I just said. Uh, those are the words <laughs> no. that just came out of my mouth. Exactly. <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that that was pretty much the news that spilled out from that conversation. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, so there we go. Um, but but Evelyn now Evelyn is is last we had knew about them was Evelyn had cut out all traces of Laura on her Instagram. Is that still the case? That's correct. And as of this morning, she says she actually cut ties with her via a conversation. So Laura knows that she's done with her now. Interesting. And apparently Laura was causing all kinds of trouble for her and Corey, even though she doesn't really define what her and Corey are right now. Uh, yeah. <sighs> sounds like a mess. It sounds like, you know how um, in, in the Peanuts, um, the character has like the cloud of dirt that he carries oh, around. Oh my with God, Pigpen. Yes. Pigpen, yeah. And he has this cloud of dirt that follows him. Is that I feel Laura? like Laura has this cloud of chaos that she just like leaves in her wake everywhere she's she got goes. The drama cloud just circling around her. Yeah, right. And, and so I think it. she honestly just overstayed her welcome. Someone had put on Instagram that uh, visitors are like leftovers; they start to smell after a while. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure she could only keep herself together for so long before it's like, you know, craziness. <laughs> Before the crazy, before the crazy starts to spill out. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So what else? What else did we learn this week on social media? Uh, Robert of Robert and Annie. We learned that his old house actually burned down a couple of years ago. Yes. Um, there is a picture. Um, I think it was 2016. 2016. Um, why is my brain farting on the original poster of it? <sighs> because my well, MS brain holes are contagious. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was posted um, today, actually, and it was actually confirmed via the sources um, that that actually did happen two years ago. So the reason why he's in a one bedroom right now is because he had to pretty much start from nothing. Um after his apartment burned down. So, yeah, it's it's pretty tragic, but it does give us insight to why he's living the way he does right now. Um, and that was originally posted by Pure Dramedy. Sorry. There are so many so, things I post in a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that does give us some insight, I guess, into the, to why he's living the way he's living. But, you know, I call, I call TLC shenanigans on a lot of this, but... The scene where he takes Andy to go look at an apartment, even though he just renewed his his lease, that was some bullshit, right? He knew, like, call, before he went there that he wasn't going to be renting an apartment. Right, and TLC knew that, and they, they, um, they love this kind of drama. This is the kind of stuff they set up, and I'm hoping to get in touch with that uh, real estate agent so she could tell us her yes. scoop of it. But we <laughs> know, like, their boxing scene was completely fabricated to mm -hmm. create this drama. It was, ask him about this, ask him about this. So I have no doubt that the real estate agent had the same 
kinds of thing just to stir up this drama. This is how we're going to have this scene because TLC loves this trope of we're going to take you shopping somewhere for something that you, you're you not going to get. Mm-hmm. They do this all the time when they do it with wedding dresses, they do it with jewelry, they do it with apartments especially. It's, a, it's funny. It's a, it's a Matt Sharp-ism. It's a thing, right? Go, go, just, just go shopping. Just see how it works out, right? We saw yeah. Juliana and Michael in the 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 blue spattered couch. <laughs> okay, so unpopular opinion. You like <laughs> that boyfriend, couch? My boyfriend hates that I liked that couch. <laughs> <laughs> Your boyfriend's not him, wrong. I know. <laughs> I told him I was like maybe in a really big room, and there's a lot of other bold, solid colors. He's like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I like weird uh, abstract watercolor splash kind of like of colorful art. And I thought that thing was atrocious, but, you know. <laughs> right. So, yeah. There's no accounting for taste. Annie, Annie <laughs> wants the key, but Darcy got the key. <laughs> it's, it's funny how they go <laughs> it, 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 I don't understand. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny about Darcy is that 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 uh, Michael guy um, that she was in Liverpool with, the one who kept changing oh, his yes. story with me mm-hmm. and, and gave me the revenge porn of her and stuff. Aww. Seems he's missing her now because he's posting a lot of sad, lonely heart quotes, inspirational quotes on his Instagram. I don't, about I don't understand. Someone. I visited his Instagram a couple times. You can't even, I don't think you can comment on anything he posts. It's like, what what is the deal with Maybe his follower Spike started plateauing, so he needed some more. <laughs> he needed to get some more. <laughs> he needed to throw another piece of wood in the fire. <laughs> He's just like, I'm just begging for followers. Speaking of begging. Speaking this of week begging. On Instagram was the week of asking for handouts as well. Um, yeah. It seems like everyone was posting how they had uh, an Amazon wish list or a P.O. box in Robert's case or a. Um, God, who else posted? Poll did. Yeah. So Robert posts this to this post that said something to all the loving mothers who are wanting to send Bryson gifts. Here's the P.O. box. Now, let me get the let me just sort of set this tone here. Like if somebody wants to send stuff to Bryson or to Robert or whatever, I go for it. I have I, I ain't got no beef with that. If you want to reach out to them and you want to send stuff to them, that's fine. I mean, if you want to reach out to me and pay my student loan bills, that's fine, too. I ain't going to be <laughs> mad about it. But I have a hard time believing that he had so many people doing this that the most effective way for him to handle it was a post rather than just responding to each one of those individually with his address. Exactly. Like, I- you know, if it was overwhelming to the point where he's like, let me just blast it out to everyone. Um, See, I don't know. I think, I think just tactfully I would have, I don't know. I'm really skeptical on people mailing me anything in the first place. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, my student loans are serviced through the department of education. (laughs) Right. It's that (laughs) the year Christmas time kids like gifts. (laughs) <laughs> Please don't say, oh no, but God. seriously like i mean the whole the whole thing just was like screaming begging 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 it's like the gofundmes and all the other things like like again if you want to send stuff to him i i have no no problem with that i have zero issues with that it's the pretending that he had so many people messaging him that the effective way to handle it was to make this post right and then of course Paul, poll, oh, poop water poll followed suit with his own poop post about <laughs> gifts for <laughs> gifts for Pierre. And again, same thing. I have a hard time believing that there's that many people who are wanting to send gifts to Pierre and that that he can't just respond to them individually. So, right. Yeah. So, um and then <laughs> Oh, and then Colt, Colt joined in in on the fun. So, so what what do we what do we think about Colt's post? He put up his Amazon wish list, didn't he? I think so. Yeah. And I didn't get a chance to look at it. <laughs> I wanted to see what was on there. 
<laughs> see, I think I think he's really a troll at heart, honestly. And I think he probably thought the same thing we did is fine. We'll just jump on the bandwagon because if you get me something, then cool. But <laughs> I meant to see what he had on there because I would put completely inappropriate shit on there. Oh, my God. That would be hilarious. <laughs> you know I would. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys! Are we gonna start? Like, is she gonna start a a, a cactus fruit juice? Yes. Fake troll Amazon wish list just yes. to see what you guys buy her. <laughs> it's like really don't spend your money on me, but that's you know I just I just got over how weird cameo is, and then they do this wave of like I hate cameo. I don't understand, especially for me. I don't understand how someone's paying thirty five dollars for that. Did you know that Cameo takes 20% of that? I Their take understand. is 20%. Isn't that crazy? So it's, it's crazy, but like, I guess that, I mean, I mean, whoever came up with Cameo, the, the business as a business model, like, like, oh my God, that's <laughs> brilliant though. Right. It like, is. <laughs> I wish I had thought of that, like capitalizing on all these D-list celebrities trying to, you know, pretend that they're famous. And you see some of the cameo videos and you're like, what in God's creation is happening <laughs> How here? How did you end up on a TV show? What? No, stop. <laughs> stop. Stop with the cameo. Well, speaking of cult, we're going to get into some of that in just a minute here. Um, I have some, we have some insider information about Colt, um, Jess, Caroline, and Vanessa, the whole love triangle that you may not be aware of if you're not on Instagram. Or understand if you are. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But we know that Colt has filmed, and we know that Jess, Caroline, his girlfriend has filmed, and Vanessa has as well. So uh, we have an inside source that is going to actually explain all of that and why we make hair. But before we get into that, (laughs) before we get into that, (laughs) some of the other tea that we've learned this week was that Tanya and Sinjin are married. They got married this summer. So we found a post that Tanya had made on the app Thumbtack, which is where you use to like find services and uh, whatnot. Like I'm using it to try to find a a photo booth for an event that I'm throwing at school. Mm. And she used it to apparently find a wedding officiant. And she thanked him. She wrote a review and thanked him on there and signed it, Tanya and Sinjin. And the guy replied, said, thank you. You know, you guys were a lovely couple, blah, blah, blah. Your your wedding was filled with love. So we know that they have gotten married in this past summer. And if you want to see that, that is on my Instagram at frauded by TLC. Then I also got started to get some leaks from the tell all, which is uh, interesting. I haven't been able to figure this one out yet, but maybe you can help. <laughs> Maybe the listeners can help. I learned that at the time of the taping of the tell-all, there's one couple who is not together. Mm. So who do we think that might be? Given that we know Blake and Jasmine are married, we know Tanya and Sinjin are married. Well, we've seen proof of Michael and, and Juliana are married. And the beekeepers are married. And the beekeepers are married. So the big toss up is Angela and Michael. Mm -hmm. And uh, is his name Michael or Mike? Yeah, Mike. (laughs) There's a lot of Mike Mike and Natalie. Right. Mike and Natalie. Um, Mm -hmm. There has, and there's been, and they haven't been very active either. Mm -hmm. You know, and that never says anything because, you know. Yeah, their social media is kind of quiet, although I think Natalie posted something something today, but that could be, you know, there's some speculation there based on what she said. But, you know, it's it's interesting because we have not been able to find a marriage certificate for either of those two couples, for either Angela and Michael or for Mike and Natalie. And right. 
Yeah, we have not and been the able to find The town he lives in isn't large. I mean, a no, regular and request we search- from there would be nothing. <laughs> right, and we we searched all kinds of... Um, oh, Emily and Sasha, we forgot about them. But they're posting pictures together. So I'm I'm relatively sure they... Yeah. If yeah. he's still here... Yeah. I mean... So the thing about them is they arrived in the United States, what we saw on the show this week. They arrived in the United States in May. Oh, okay. And we're in December now. So they would have had to get married by August at the latest. I have some evidence that we believe they got married the end of July-ish in Ooh. the Portland area. But I'm still trying to trying to get more confirmation <laughs> on it. Right now it's speculation. I wouldn't bet the farm on that. But uh, I would bet the farm that Mike lives on that – uh, Natalie is not in the United States right now. And that sucks because I would have really wanted her to visit the apple orchard. Yeah. Just and, to hang out Uncle with Bojangles. Bo. Yeah. <laughs> I freaking love him. <laughs> now, the other person that I learned was not at the tell-all was Michael of Michael and Angela. Well, that's shocking. So this further evidence <laughs> on the continuing case of Michael's visa that we talked about on Katrina's court last week. If Michael is not at the tell-all, that and weighs in favor there. of his, his mm. yeah, he's not in the United States. And therefore, that weighs in favor of his visa having been denied. So that's but more evidence. Do you think evidence. he's Kay Dunn? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Angela is actually going to let that one go. Like, she God. says it. She says it. But I, I'm pretty sure that. no. You know, she's probably going to try to figure out, you know, they're, well, TLC is pushing the storyline, what she's going to do if his visa is denied. And she's talking about, exactly. I'm not going to move over there. So they're pushing this, the storyline, right? And she's telling me how she won't move over there. She's not going to leave her family. Never mind that that's exactly what she's asking Michael to do, or rather telling him to do is leave his family, have a wedding without his family there and all that. Right. But, you know, the, we don't know at this point. But I could take her more whole family more. over there. <laughs> that would be a TLC spinoff. Oh All of Angela's God. crew there just packs up and moves to Nigeria. My intel on this that came with when I first learned that Michael's visa was denied all in all likelihood, the intel that I got with that came with the Angie is trying or sorry Angela is trying to figure out what she's going to do at this mm-hmm. point because he you know he doesn't have a visa and she doesn't want to go over there and maybe she should do a, a season of the other way and pretend like she's going to go live over there because the other way is just entirely them pretending they're going to go live in the other countries <laughs> so I might think as the well other right? way couples all like burned and crashed in a fire except for Devin and, Devin and Jahoon right yeah. the rest well, of them yeah. No, uh, Tiffany and Ronald are still together. Oh, that's trying true. to come back to get, come back to the United States. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see it. I I don't. I mean, I I don't know what the rules are, but is the Nigerian marriage license not valid for the visa? I have no idea. Like, if they were to get married in Nigeria, would that? count like it they could come back on a spousal visa yeah i think it's like the k3 like i did some research when you know i think somebody that's what, went over there but maybe i that, think that's what angela is is debating at this point because those you know those are her options now you do you really want to be with him then this is what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to actually go over there and get married there and live there and find a way right instead of getting married at the cotton patch <laughs> oh <laughs> but it was so charming. Yeah, so that's where we're at with the current cast. Um, we Oh, we also know that Michael, of Michael and Juliana, went live to blast TLC editing, which, oh, shocker, yeah. TLC Another edits. victim. Another victim. <laughs> you know, you and I feel bad because he him? seemed, right, he seemed genuinely hurt. Like, as soon as it aired, you could just probably see it bubbling up where it's like, bullshit. The sad thing is, like, it's not new that TLC jiggles with the timeline, right? Right. Or the story. No. So yeah. I, I'm always wondering, like, if any of the cast members take a real deep dive before they actually apply for it or 
they're just okay with whatever's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Or they watched the show and they thought that that was real. So they strive to be normal oh. and it still didn't happen, God. you know? Bless their heart. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel, I feel bad and I hope, I hope maybe they'll, you know, maybe come speak to us or something. Yeah, we're hoping. I'm trying to get, <laughs> trying to get Michael, trying to get, trying to get them on and maybe, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. But, um, yeah, you know, <laughs> TLC frauds. He does. He did seem genuinely surprised at the bad edit or bad cut or frauding mm-hmm. storylines or whatever. Even though the contracts like literally say we may make you look bad. <laughs> well, and I and I was curious too because you know when they, they um, Sarah came out and said that they didn't agree with the storyline they were doing. I guess I don't understand how the production goes. Are they forcing them to do it? Even if they go, we don't like that. They're like, we don't care. Run the line. I I think that's generally how it is. I don't know how forceful they have to be, but how much do these cast members protest Mm -hmm. about the lines that they're given to say or the storyline or, you know, I think in that case and in the case that Michael's complaining about it, it was the way that it was cut together and edited in the the mediator and stuff. And it wasn't so much the feeding lines, although I suspect a lot of Sarah's lines were, were fed to her and she just went with it because, you know, it's just part of it. It's fine. It's just, you know, friendly fire as it were. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, and asking so. about the prenup is fine, but or prenush. <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like an appetizer. Would you like some prenush? Right. Yes, yes, I would. <laughs> you know, and what's also interesting is Paul went po- made a post saying that in Brazil, the prenup aspect, like what we know is a separate document, is actually part and parcel of the marriage contract in Brazil. So that might that would explain why she doesn't really know what a prenup is mm. as a separate document because it's a, that concept. The things that are covered in a prenup are already covered in the Brazilian marriage contract. So having this this separate document to outline what would happen, who you know, what kind of assets go where in the event of a divorce, that's already accounted for. So Paul posted that. So thank you, Paul. And Good that would know. explain. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get back to the Colt, Jess, Caroline, Vanessa, uh, love triangle. So Elizabeth is here to tell us what is going on and why we care. Take it okay. away. Well, basically, most of you don't care. Um, but for those of you who do, I do know them, and I will let you know what's going on. So, what do you want to know, okay? <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> what's happening? Who's, who's Colt dating? What's the story? Cole who are these people? not dating Vanessa. They are best friends. But Vanessa very, lives with very them, Very, right? best friends. Very, very best friends. I think they should friends be friends with personal. benefits. Are they friends with benefits? Uh, as far as I know, no. But I have not gone as far as asking that question myself. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. But Vanessa lives at the house with Colt and Debbie, correct? Now she did. I do not know if she, I, I believe she moved out. I'm not 100% positive she lives there right now or not. I know she's there every single day. I do not know if she lives there anymore. I mean, she's his best friend. She is there every day. Debbie loves her. Debbie wants her to date Colt. She does not want to date Colt. But does Colt want to date her? Yeah, well, as far as I know, I think so. Uh-huh. So Colt does want her, but she doesn't want Colt. Okay, so was she around when Colt was marrying Larissa? And if so, no. did she have an opinion? No. no, she was not around during those days. She did not know Colt back then. Um, back then, there was no interaction between them. She met him later because of the show. It was after that. So was she like a crazy stalker fan? Totally. Slid into his DMs. Yeah. She was a totally <laughs> crazy stalker fan. Vanessa's a total crazy stalker fan. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. She, she's, 
And she was just one of those people who was out there like I was that was on Reddit and Instagram. And, you know, we would stick up for him. And guess what? There were, you know, a whopping like six of us that would ever. <laughs> for fun, right? So we all got made fun of. And so the whopping six of us all got to know each other. And she was one of them. And she ended up. Uh, becoming really good friends with him because she happened to live in Las Vegas at the time. Mm -hmm. And then she went through a really, really... I might have said too much. Um, She went through a divorce (laughs) and she spent some time with Colt. Uh, He got her through her really rough patch. She was going through a really rough patch with the divorce. I mean, divorces are always awful, right? And he was there for her. And you'd never think this about Colt. Like, everybody thinks Colt is just such an asshole, right? Um, Thing is, as a person who knows him, I can say he's not. And not only that, but he actually got her through the divorce. I mean, he was there for her. He helped her. He got her through there. She did move in. And I don't know if that's NDA or not, so we might have to cut that out. Um, no, no, just just to interrupt you real quick, you, you mentioned NDA, and the reason why a non-disclosure agreement is even at issue here is because there has been filming involved, and there will continue to be filming involved. So, so a lot of stuff is covered under those NDAs. All of these people are going to be seen on our TV screens. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. no, Vanessa's going to be seen on the TV screen because she does live there. She uh, Not right now. She did live with Debbie and Colt for a time. So she she definitely lived in the house, and uh, she lived in their extra room, and that made uh, Miss Jess apparently very angry. And so was Colt dating Jess at this time? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. It oh gets, boy. <laughs> that part is NDA, and no, we can't go there. <laughs> okay. So so we know that Colt was dating this girl, Jess Caroline. Jess. This is correct. Yeah, the other Brazilian that, with the weird ass, you know, kitty tattoos all over her freaking self. Yeah. No, we don't like her. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, we we know that they have broken up. Yes. Um, but we also know that they were filming together, sure. so we'll see what kind of storyline comes out of that. We also know that Larissa and Eric were filming. That is also correct as far as I know. There are going to at least be a couple, if not more, episodes of Larissa and Eric together. Even though they have long since even though they, Even though Eric could never have sponsored her legally, and they did break up. Yes. They did. Why well, couldn't he sponsor her legally? Because you cannot ever sponsor a second person. So if you come over on a K-1, you have to stay with the person who sponsored you. You cannot switch sponsors. That is a very strict legal thing with the K-1. Interesting. I mean, sponsor. that makes sense. That's if it. one person qualifies to get you over, then you can't switch it over to someone who might be less qualified. Exactly. Um, well, but then how does know, that, how does, well, and it doesn't even matter if it's less qualified or more qualified. The point is you can't, you can't just come over and be like, I'm going to switch people <laughs> You either stay with that person or you go home. It's pretty easy. <laughs> it's right there <laughs> in the very basic legal writing. So, yeah, I don't, okay. I, I, I don't know if Larissa didn't know that, but well, it's Larissa. So. Yeah. But we know Larissa and Eric broke up a long time ago. So the what yeah. we see on the TV when when they when they come on with whatever they're filming, they're going to be pretending that they're still in a relationship. So TLC yeah. fraud. Well, will and be- they've been even taking pictures together recently, even though they are continually broken up. Mm-hmm. I I don't know why. I I mean probably just for attention. The and sweet, you know, it does sharp it's, money. Snake gets a ton of, you know, she takes a picture with him, and how many likes does she get? Like fifteen thousand or something like that. I mean, it's crazy. So of right. course she does something like this. Right. Do you happen to know what the status of Larissa's visa is? I do. She was turned down on November seventh, and she oh. should have gone home. Oh, but she's not. That is correct. 
Now, there may be, she may be asking for some sort of extension. I don't know what else is going on. I do know that she was told it was expired on November 7th. That was the date that she needed to go back. She did not. Interesting. It's very interesting. So we have to look and see what kind of legal documents maybe are being filed after that. If I think I somebody should. I'll <laughs> bet I know who we can get to do that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I have access to immigration records. <laughs> I wasn't sure if those were those public. Those are really public. hard to get, though, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. I mean, all of that. Yeah. I mean, that stuff is really hard to get. Can't imagine. Yeah. yeah. It's not like marriage and divorce certificates. And things no, like because that. it's easy. We can just look up marriage records, like, boom. But, yeah, immigration stuff is really hard. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So, so is there any other juicy gossip about this this threesome? Did Vanessa was Vanessa the cause of the breakup between Colt and Jess? Absolutely not. Okay. No, Vanessa was what there was the whole cause time. Of the breakup? She was the friend. Uh, she always was. Okay. Now that Jess is out of the picture, uh, my personal hope is that he goes after Vanessa. But it's Colt, and I can't make him do a damn thing, and he is one stubborn-ass man, so who knows? Um, do we know why Colt and Jess Caroline broke up? I am not allowed to say anything about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell us if... I know she has posted some stuff regarding the size of his manhood which I've seen. Well, I think everyone has seen pictures. the size of his mansion, so I don't think we really need to discuss that, do we? Everyone <laughs> I can happily right? say I like have we've not. All seen it. Whoa, like, you know the nope. truth here. Do we, need, do we really need to go there? It's out there. Hello. Good point. Fair. Fair point. And, and I really hope to not see it again. And uh, Hanakawa, your, your virgin eyes. Yes, they're so <laughs> innocent. I cannot see. <laughs> She, she's lucky enough that she hasn't seen those yet. <laughs> she hasn't seen. You have not seen the slow. She was not. Oh, we need to not. Set the oh no, no, no I'm going to the on. Yeah. Will not no. send. <laughs> no, 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 no. We does do not, not like send. <laughs> we do not send nude pictures of anybody uh, without consent. Sorry, mm. that just doesn't happen. Ah, oh, that's right. The lawyer speaks. Okay, uh, I no. <laughs> Do not send. Yes, ma'am. Anyway. <laughs> I'll ask Colt first. <laughs> <laughs> From what I understand, Colt doesn't need a lot of prodding to send his... Um, uh, well, unfortunately, I believe the that's world. the problem, and I give him crap about this quite a bit. <laughs> he actually gets a little pissy about it, but you know what? I mean, come on. <laughs> you're sending your yeah yeah you're sending your little willy out there to everybody unsolicited yeah. so I mean, this is just this is just come on come on yeah <laughs> so i give i give him a little crap about that but he but he, he he's got a good enough sense of humor that he's usually nice and nice enough to just deal with it excellent so okay so that's a, a lot of interesting stuff uh do you have anything else that you want to share with us about them that you can share um, well, let's see. Um, so as of these days, um, Jess, uh, mm, I don't know because this is NDA probably. So I probably can't, I probably can't, I probably can't say what's going on right now. Can I? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's being filmed. I don't know. Well, but I don't if it's already, it's filmed, already, I don't know it's already what... been filmed and they haven't aired it yet, then I can't say what's going on right now. Right. Probably, yeah. Yeah, so then I can't. Okay. okay. Well, so we know who to come back to when the show, What do we know, do we at least know what iteration of the show it's going to be on? Is it Happily Ever After? Is it a new one? We, no, we know? and I don't believe they even know what they're going to call it. Okay. Um, but, oh, there is an incredibly funny thing that was in their NDA, and I will read this to you, because I okay. have the actual text of it. 
And okay. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Hold on. It's going to take me a minute to find it. So give me just a second. I'm sorry. It said, you will be embarrassed. We may or may not make you look bad. <laughs> and that is going to be part of your show. And apparently that is in, I guess, everybody's NDA. And most people just don't bother to read it. But Vanessa read it. And so she was pissed. Um, for good reason, I would be pissed too. I mean, they're clearly well, telling you what they plan to do. Yeah, they're, too, they're, they're like, we're going to do whatever the hell we want to do with what we think about you. And and then, an and then the cast and gets mad when that's exactly... The, and the cast gets mad when that's exactly what happens. Maybe when not lays over that part. Yep, exactly. They're just that's so thirsty. In they're the so NDA, thirsty. they actually say they're going to embarrass you. The word <laughs> embarrassment is in the NDA. Nice. All right. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. Not your real name. We uh, appreciate you sharing all that with us. Absolutely no problem. All right, thanks. We know who to come to when uh, whatever it is starts airing. Well, when it comes up, then I'll be able to tell more. So <laughs> I will be uh, happy to come back. Well, give us all the behind-the-scenes info. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. Bye-bye. All right, thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. So what are your thoughts? That was a flood of info. <laughs> a flood of info <laughs> that's not info, and I'm curious of what TLC is going to share that's not. I, I mean, because... I'm just trying to think of what they could possibly use the footage for. Some kind of happily ever after, some kind of, I mean, what now, maybe? Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. But, I haven't dived too much into the franchise to know how they're supposed to link together. Uh, <laughs> I think they just, them. whatever, you know, exist. pull shit out of their ass. Whatever's <laughs> happening that day. They, I know. <laughs> whatever way the wind is blowing that day. All right, so moving along, we have uh, the, this week's interview. We, I was able to sit down and talk with Jason Hitch of season two, Jason and Cassia. And I rewatched their season in anticipation of this interview to see if, to, if see, see if I could refresh my memory if he was really as much of a dick as I remembered him the first time I watched the show. Yeah. And the answer to that is yes. So I'm going to have a trigger warning. <laughs> trigger warning before this interview. If sexist, misogynistic pigs trigger you, you might want to not listen. Right. If you were triggered by the series itself, <laughs> click away. Fast forward. How long is this? Fast forward. <laughs> So he talks about the show and how much fraud was on the show in his season. And there there was a lot, actually. So here you go. First, let's talk about your season and season two and your relationship with Cassia. To give you the cliff note version, which is what <laughs> we all want, because we don't have time for all the explicit <laughs> details. She uh, she was actually going out uh, international online dating uh, a basic training bunk mate. He was in the top bunk. I was in the bottom bunk. And um, I further uh, continued my training in the army. And then I went to OCS to become an officer. Uh -huh. And um, he went to New York. And they were corresponding via internet online. And then when I got my commission, I reached out to him. And said, what do you, well, your Facebook says you're going out, you're dating or whatever. How could you be going out with somebody if she doesn't live in New York? So he says, oh, we're online dating. Okay. I said, what, I says, what the hell is online dating? Sure enough, six months later, I would be doing it myself. So it was. Oh, God. Damn. You, you, you copped your, your boy's girl is what you're saying. Yeah, but he got me back though. Well, okay. <laughs> Were they still dating when she just like? Did you just like slide? Like I, I don't know the, what the what it was back then. We just um, know sliding to your DMs back then. But well, what, how, I guess I, to, to sound vulgar, they they call that cock blocking. Yes. Yeah. So I I I I went to my training, and then at the end of the fall, um, she came to me and said, "I'm not sure if I like him anymore. What do you think about me and you?" 
And why I would she come to you? What kind of? Why did she have any even any kind of contact with you? Well, such we that were she would. Because what? Because we were just buddies. How were you buddies with her when she was talking to him? Were you um, having like group phone sex? No, she she and I would would correspond a couple times a week. Oh, you're a dirty dog. <laughs> um, that was a dick move. Had, but I guess, uh, karma, well, I guess karma yeah, got uh, you in the end on that. Though, it so. did. It, karma <laughs> got me and her and him. Um, he he left the army. I think he had some drug and some alcohol issues. You don't care about uh, him. I care about yeah. you. Care about her. Um. But uh, they they ended up meeting before you did. Uh, yeah, they th- before she even arrived at uh, America. Okay, so he went to Brazil to see her. Yeah. Well, you were also and, corresponding. And we're gonna just her? and we're gonna just leave it at that. Oh my God, this is shady as fuck. That's all I can say. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, so, so you and let's her just started- say Katrina. <laughs> let's just say. There were plenty of red flags to not do the show, break up then, not bring her to America, not get married, not put it, put, not put three years into this, which turned into four by the time she did college and moved back to the house and then finalized the divorce. So, yes. Jesus. My bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so you steal your buddy's um, girlfriend, and and you decide to go to to Brazil. Had you contacted the show at this point? No. Okay, so you went to Brazil and you met in person and you got engaged there. What what happened? Um, What's the timeline. No, I had I already I had already been down there twice. Okay. Before the show even aired, because it aired in January of fourteen. I okay. I emailed some guy who was an executive at TLC and not sharp. I didn't know who they were um, in a- April ish of 14. Okay. And then an hour later, sharp called me and said, Oh, we want to do, we want to have you on. We want to have you on, you know, what, what's the story with you? And I says, I haven't even asked her to marry me yet. <laughs> so they were on me for over a month. And of course, um, I then confess my undying love to her. Uh, so, did she have a magical uh, pussy? Is that what happened? Um, no. <laughs> okay. So, I concocted this idea that she would quit her college, which was she had one more year to go, uh, leave everything, and then come here. Uh, we get the house in Florida. Uh, we do college here in Florida, and we live happily ever after. What could possibly go wrong? Right. <laughs> so, so she agrees to be on the show. TLC gets involved. And so I remember the show opening up, and I actually just rewatched your season um, in preparation for this interview because yes. I'm, like, professional and shit, so it's like my research, right? So the show kind of opens with you guys on Skype. The beauty of that scene when we when I was Skyping – Okay. Is that she had just she had just got her medical forms approved because if you didn't have your medical forms going into your interview for your K one, mm-hmm. there's no reason to go to your K one interview. Okay. Why I was skyping to say, hey, did your medical paper come in? We're going to be fucked. There's really no reason for you to fly to Rio for the interview. Okay. And they they shut down the whole country because of the damn World Cup. Okay. So, so the uh, down there decided not to deliver mail. Okay. Now, that was making good drama in real life. Now, on on the TV land, you just saw her going, "Nah, I'm not going to go." Right. That's what we saw. Was her saying, "I'm not going to yeah. show up at the airport. I'm not going to show up at the airport." Yeah. When you flew she in, she thought that that was a way to get me back. Because I had gone three days or so without talking to her. Because I told her the TV crew was at my house and I can't talk to her every five minutes. Well, both of those things sound super mature. (laughs) Not an indication of things to come at all. Um, (laughs) What are you trying to say? 
I'm, I'm just saying the writing was on the wall. You're just saying, yeah. I'm just saying. So, okay. So, so she comes, she comes over here and you're living with your dad and in kind of a rundown. We had just, home. We had just moved into the house. No, the house was empty. We had, that's why you saw boxes in the garage. Cause we just moved in. Okay. Okay. We, we, the pool was green because we just moved in that weekend. Okay, so you just moved in, and you're bringing this love of your life that you're going to marry into a house that you're just moved into with your father, because that sounds reasonable. Right, that's why they told us, oh, no, we're going to show you painting, we're going to show you buying furniture, we're going to fix your pool. I mean, they said, oh, no, you are going to do a whole remodel of your house, and we'll show all that. And they so, didn't. Well, no, they had to cut it all out. Oh, they had six couples, so they okay. so one couple had had to go every week, had to get booted. Okay. So you booted it up. They they put you guys on in fa- if, instead of another couple that they had already filmed. Well, uh, yeah, everybody was in the can as of probably August, and we started filming in late July, and okay. we we filmed into the showing of the first episode so our wedding we were filming when the first episode aired october 13th oh okay october 13th All so right. we were privy just to, to see the show why we're being filmed that's why you saw me wear that shirt that said uh the hitch bitch and uh-huh. uh you're so idiot and a few yeah. other things that i was trying yeah. to uh product placement uh, <laughs> oh, just geez. to um just to feed my own ego of course of course <laughs> Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I actually just watched your wedding um, right before get, talking with you. It was lovely. Um, we know that it, uh, you know, spoiler alert, alert, they don't last, you guys. They do get divorced. Um, they had a couple of starts and stops with the divorce. There was divorce threatened, and then there was divorce papers filed, and then the divorce papers got pulled, and then they got filed again, and eventually you guys actually eventually legally divorced. Now, before we get into other stuff, I want to hear about – so the, the show is a lot different now than it was back in your season. But there was frauding going on then. What kinds of things can you tell me about the um, producer-driven stuff, you know, the, the situations they put you in? I know you talked about that was a producer's phone. That you, that's why you said, hi, it's Jason or whatever to me um, because it wasn't your own phone. Tell me about that. Yeah, she didn't re- – she didn't recognize my phone number. Well, look, I was already married. First of all, uh, my wife at the time was not going to allow a bachelor party with strippers, period. So I said – Wait, wait. That, you guys had already been mar- gotten married at that point? Yeah, we were married that Tuesday. And so the bachelor party was sh- that the, they showed that supposedly came before the wedding actually came after the wedding? Yeah, Um we were married the Tuesday. Uh, no, that we were filmed. Um, we got married on the thirteenth. We filmed the TV wedding on the nineteenth in Vegas. Oh, okay. So we were in Vegas. On, we were in Vegas on Thursday, and we got filmed it. the bachelor party on Saturday. The, the, the quote unquote the bachelor party before the real wedding. Okay, so you guys had already legally gotten married in Florida. Yes. Okay. Which is where you live. So right. you guys are in Vegas pretending like you hadn't gotten married yet. And there's this bachelor party that – was that an entirely uh, TLC production yeah, um, scene? Or did you guys talk about that? They promised us a certain amount of things in Vegas um, because they, they screwed us over. I had, I had done a, a deal with Caesars Palace to do one of these $25,000 – full spread weddings like you see okay. on the TV, okay. like a, like a Kardashian might, you know, come down to $25,000. This girl I went to high school with her sister ran the weddings at Caesar's palace. What a coincidence. So she and I were working a deal. Okay. And, and that was pretty much our entire 90 days when I was talking to producers and trying to get TLC to sign on the red line uh, to, to make sure this is going to happen. And the producers got back to me 
just about two weeks, a week and a half before our flights were out, saying, do you have another wedding that, that you <laughs> could use, another, another venue or a, a backup? I said, no, we've been working this for three months. I said, sign the fucking dotted line or I'm not going to fly out and you're not going to have your show. So they were scrambling to put me up at the shithole motel, as you saw, while 14 of their staff were at the resort at 150 a night while I was put up at the shithole hotel for 54 bucks a night. Yeah, that place was a shithole. But they um, they have no explanation on why they did that, and nor did I get an apology, nor did I get a wedding gift from them. <laughs> but um, and they sandbagged me on the twenty five thousand dollar wedding. So what you saw there was something that I did about a week before I flew to Vegas. I called every wedding venue in Vegas, asking them to cop my wedding. <laughs> so the one I got a hold of was like my third call that you saw on TV. Yeah, she cop. She comped the whole thing. Photography, food, sermon, venue, uh, tuxedos, everything. When I say everything, I meant everything. So I got married in Vegas a million years ago, and um, it cost me like 150 bucks. So, I mean, we didn't have the whole – all of the rest of the stuff. But it's not like it's that expensive, you know, to, to get married in Vegas. It's Vegas after all. So you did this whole thing, uh, and that's what it was filmed. But going back to – Okay, the the bachelorette party, the air quote, quote unquote, oh, the bachelorette, bachelorette party. Yes. Yeah. Was so that, they that was producer driven. Yeah. So we were we were at the pepper mill, and they were like, "Oh, we're going to pay up to five hundred dollars worth of drinks." So in about forty minutes, we maxed out the five hundred. Jesus, pretty quick. Well, she was between, she was getting on my, you about drinking too. Yeah, I saw that again. It's my first time, and I'm like, "Oh wow, I was pretty lit." <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, okay. If you could spend f- you and your buddies, your family, your brother, and stuff, who was kind of a dick, by the way, spent which was probably yeah. producer driven, also um, spent no, five hundred dollars on drinks in in t- uh, twenty minutes. So, um, yeah. So, tell me more about what was producer driven and what was this, real. This was a total shock to me. Uh, we were done with the um, with the scene at the peppermint, which you saw um, with the six of us with the family. Okay. Uh, you know, around the little semicircle, at the you know, um, and they actually filmed Casino in there. Um, so we were we were done wrapping things up, and I got pulled aside and said, uh, "What about the bachelor party? What about the bachelor party? We'll pay for it. We'll pay for it. Uh, we'll we'll get you a cab. We'll pay for the cover charges." And I said, "No," I says, "I've been up since four thirty playing golf, filming with you fuckers all day. I'm going to bed. I'm tired. I got a wedding tomorrow." <laughs> But so they made like, you do this thing anyway. So they says, well, well, why don't you just sit around and, and, and talk and we'll, we'll pay for all this. And and um, and I says, OK, fine. So I rounded up the three or four guys that were there. And then that's when you we sat around talking about women. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I said, well, you know, Kasi is all by herself when really she was just 20. She was 20 feet away with my sister the whole time. <laughs> Just waiting for you guys to film this, this fake yeah. scene. Okay. Um, now, what got her crying, because for the two weeks, you saw her crying. She's mm-hmm. going, I don't know if I can marry him. I don't know if I can marry him. Mm-hmm. She said, I don't know if I can marry him if he has sex with prostitutes, <laughs> blah, 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 and strip clubs. Reasonable. <laughs> right. So they cut it off before she said the word prostitute and strippers. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. so, I actually gave her that line. <laughs> so everything is completely scripted. Was there anything that's real with you guys on this up on the season? Yeah, everything was real. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't. My phone died. So she's like, um, "Why don't you Why don't you message her and let her know that you're not having fun and you miss her." And uh, you're coming home. I'm like, my phone's fucking dead. So she's <laughs> like, here, take my phone. So then I take her phone. I'm like, I don't even know Cassie's phone number because she had an international number. You know, the five five plus plus one oh five, mm-hmm. you know, the, the Brazilian number. So I just dialed the number 
and 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 played it off like it was her number. Okay, so it was just completely faked. Yeah, because okay. Cassie was in the was in the lobby or in the you know the lobby uh, the the foyer there at the, the the where the hostess is, and my sister was there, and the two kids were there, and my brother was waiting for me to hurry, and because he wanted to gamble, and and my father was there, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So, okay. so that was the end of it. So we, we had, we babysat those margarita, those, those fruit, those gooey blender drinks. Um, I said to text to her that I was sorry, I'm coming home and I miss her. And that was a uh, end scene. Okay. So, okay. So then um, they show your wedding um, and then you guys right off into the sunset and everything is happy. Accepted that it's not. Um, what happened so then, after filming <laughs> the, the show? So fast forward to till about June of fifteen. After they called all the other couples, apparently we were last again. Okay. To say, hey, we're going to do a two-hour update episode, oh, just one episode, and we're going to air it right before the new season starts because happened. Happily ever after didn't exist. Right. So, okay. um, so, okay. Well, actually, sorry, I forgot something before we get into that. This, your season was the first season that had a tell all couples tell all. Yes. And it so, wasn't in our script. It wasn't in your contract. No. So did they yeah, script our contract? They did. They did. How much of that was scripted? How much of that was real? Um, it was all cookie cutter. Uh, the 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 host uh, the girl from NBC at the time right uh, wasn't Sean Robinson yeah Aaron something the white girl I can't think of her name now uh, Aaron something she admit, she admitted to me that she didn't watch the show okay so she just had these so, cards of things to ask you yeah she had these cards uh, because I I talked to the producer and her I had them in a little triangle and I was calling them both out for not even watching the show and how could you do a fucking tell all when neither one of them have watched the show. Right. Right. Because it's all completely scripted and it doesn't matter if they watch the show because they have these sp- specific questions TLC or Sharp wants them to ask and that's it. So fast forward, I just wanted to not fall asleep during the eight hours of sitting on that couch. I wanted <laughs> to just get my check, which was coming to me after the after five o'clock and then Get on a plane and get the F home. Okay. Um, that's why they didn't they didn't give us alcohol like they did in the future tell alls. Uh, <laughs> we were all fa- we were all falling asleep. We all weren't going to talk bad about each other. Uh, Danny, Danny and Amy, before we went to start filming at eight a.m., they pulled everybody together in the green room, and Danny actually like stood on a chair and <laughs> said something like, "Like, hey, look." They can't make can't make us say anything. Um, let's just go out and have a nice time, and um, you know, God bless you and His holier, you know, Jesus stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, His Merry Christmas, and I love you guys, and uh, we have a bond and all that stuff. And the producers were like twenty feet away hearing all this, and I looked at them the whole time, and they looked like they they didn't know whether or not to shit or go blind. <laughs> okay, so. I got on there and I kind of told Cassio, you know, what I'm going to say and what she's going to say and said, hey, what do you think? Uh, you know, let's just not bad mouth each other. And I love you and you love me and you look great. You're the best looking one here. And I love your new makeover. And that's that's what I kind of wanted to do to her. I, I got I spent like five or six hundred bucks on everything. Because you know, every she totally got trashed through the whole season right. by you women. Because she needed and, to do something about those um, her roots. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, there that's you go. The com- that's the commentary it has to do with. So her I told her, look, I ne- I renegotiated what they were going to offer us, and we I was very pleased. Okay. So okay. if she wanted a new dress, shoes, panties, bras, hair makeup um anything she wanted she's gonna get and she'll look like she had a total makeover okay and and listening to everybody's responses after the makeover uh it went it went very well it was fantastic 
Okay. Her okay, image her was changed. And um, the only thing that sticks out to me with the tell all is at the very end, I think I was telling her how much I loved her and I started crying. Aww. And then, and then with Danielle and who's the uh-huh. other guy, Muhammad. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, the, the host, the host was so terrible. Well, that's she, probably why I, they got I felt so bad for her. I was embarrassed for her because she was just standing there. And that's when you saw me lean over and go, Muhammad, are you in love with her or not? Do you, do you love her? Mm-hmm. And that's when he started going, well, I kind of love her. I don't love her all the way. You know, he, he started hammering, you know, uh-huh. you know, stammering like that. And I just felt embarrassed for both of Danielle and Muhammad and the host because it, it just seemed like it was it was hearing dead space. And you don't want to have dead space when you're on live. Right. Well, take no, dead it, air. Right? <laughs> yeah, dead air, right? Yeah, we, so, I recently I recently interviewed was able to interview Danielle. So that was fun. Um, so, OK, so. After the tell all, you guys go home and try to live happily ever after. That doesn't happen. Yeah. So tell me about what happened in the Reader's Digest version, what happened in those oh. ensuing years. Um, 2015 and 2016 were very rocky um, because she and I weren't on the same page. Um, more or less, she didn't want to be treated like a piece of property, and you wanted to treat her like a piece of property. Where are you getting this? I'm conversations I've had with you over the last year. What? <laughs> nah, no. Um, there was a system, you know, if she wanted to go to college, she needed to do step one, and then step two, and step three. And if she wanted to get a job, she needed to do step one and step two and step three. And we had to be on the same page when it came to working together. So she viewed not getting a job as I was forcing her not to get a job. When I said, well, honey, you don't drive. You will want to make more than $7 and 25 cents an hour. You want to work more than 12 hours a week. You don't want to work food. uh, What are you going to do? You're going to pick up hangers at Kohl's in the dressing room? I said, sure, you can go ahead and do that. I had a job in school. But, honey, next semester you're going to take 19 hours at the community college because you want to go to the university to get a bachelor's degree. Yes. And she says yes. So I says, wait a minute. You don't have a driver's license to drive. You don't have a, you don't know how to drive. And you want to find a job that pays well, like 10 or $12 an hour. You want to work 30 hours a week and drive there back and forth. And you want to take 19 hours at the community college. I said, honey, this isn't going to work. So why don't you just concentrate and get straight A's with your 19 hours? You help me do eBay and we just started this uh, peanut business. You know, we're rebranding uh, the, the the snack business and uh, and selling it to our car dealers. And the fuck, she was a fuck. yeah. And she took that as uh, you're telling me what to do. You're forcing me not to work. Uh, you're nothing but an asshole. And I said, well, this is how we make five or six thousand dollars a month. Why don't you just do me a favor and shut up? You know, you, we just had sushi last night for $64. Where, where, where am I going to get my thank you? Oh, my God. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, my God, we're going to blow 100 bucks a week and going out to eat all the time? And you complain? And she's, she's supposed about to thank you for every dime you spend on her? Well, you know what? When we're popping like a hundred bucks a week on sushi, and then she's like, "Well, we don't have enough money to go to Disney because we just blew a hundred bucks in, on sushi." 
Yeah, but you're talking yeah. you're you're talking about her like 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 it's ownership. And this is where we get the ownership bit. Is that like you you took ownership over her makeover? Like I bought all of this stuff and and her I changed her image. It's like you took ownership over that because you paid for it. You paid for the sushi, so she owes you for that, and that's a bunch of bullshit. And that's why people call well, you, you know, misogynistic I, pig. Well, get, what what did I get out of it? <laughs> Companionship, love. It's not. I didn't it's get not that a much. I didn't get love. Relationship I didn't get love. I'm gonna give you money to do nice things, and you are my pretty little trophy wife that I get to trot out in front of my friends. That's not how relationships work, but that seems how, to when, be how you treat it. I never got a thank you. For I got what? A, I got a, for being a great guy. Because you're not a great guy. <laughs> Why? Because I I I didn't want to pay sixty four bucks for sushi. No, because you're treating it like like you're some benevolent like dictator, like oh, you know Captain Savaho over here. Like I just spent sixty four dollars on you buying you sushi, and you're not appreciative of that. Okay. Come over here, give me a blowjob. Well, guess like, what? That's what it. That's when, what it comes across as. Well, first of all, she and I didn't have a sexual relationship, so touche. But you know what? I wanted a little common courtesy and respect. So therefore, you're going to say we have no money to go to Disney, but yet we're going to pop sushi and, and, and have a wild budget when it comes to these other things. Well, you, that's where you sit down and you have a partnership, a joint partnership so together we had talking, to talk? talking about these things. I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, we, we, I tried to have that talk. We tried to have that talk. I said, if we're going to be a new couple, we have to, guess what? Get up in the morning, drink our water, and bust our ass for 18 hours a day. It's just not going to be given to you. So guess what I got? I got her waking up at noon. I'm twisting her arm. She doesn't want to go to the gym. She doesn't want to learn how to drive. I take her to her classes. I'm popping thousands of dollars on books, which is fine. Which is fine, you know. But don't play the, uh, you know, oh, you're doing a favor for me by going to college. Well, you're okay. acting like you're doing a favor for her by paying for her books. I, I'm not. A, it's not a favor. It's not supposed to be a favor when it's between a husband and wife. When it's between a true partnership, there are things you do for each other because you love and support each other. But the yeah, way I, I wanted you're to. you're you're having these like. I imagine this columns at your house where you're putting like Jason and Cassia and you put a little check mark in each one when you do something nice for her. And it's like this back and forth and it, look at all the things I did for you. And you didn't do one nice thing for me. Like that's what, and that's what I'm imagining in your, at your house. But well, you did, know, it, did it get to that point? Yeah. When, um, when I saw her doing nothing um, and said, wait a minute, you know, we're supposed to be working together. Uh, I just picked up a client that's like four thousand dollars a month. Why isn't she like excited about it? Why isn't she patting me on the back? Why isn't she appreciating what I just did? Because if we pick up another client, we get to move out of this fucking house. And she was not stupid. She knew that if 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 she helped me out, because she was working it too, as as we saw on that talk show episode. If she was doing the invoices or mailing out uh, flyers or whatever she was going to do, she considered that. Um, well, how did she say? She, um, uh, I was forcing her to do the, the invoices for our company, which was what twenty minutes a month. Well, maybe she didn't want to do that. Well, guess I mean, what? Not, it sounds what, like you guys say? Are we're a team. We're a team. Well, like we're supposed we're to be work together, you're keeping score. <laughs> we're keeping we're supposed to work together though right so why isn't she working to together well you know when people take offense and people bristle when they get told to do something because it's their role or they have to do it no, i never people, told her what to do i said this is what we're going to do together <laughs> that's telling her what to do okay she should want to help out it's five thousand dollars a month her okay. bitching about money all the time okay <laughs> but Okay, so let's move on from from. You want if she if she wanted a job, go across the street to Subway and get a fucking job, okay. Walk over there and get a job, but don't get a job when you have to drive the car and you don't know how to drive. 
Um, okay. So your marriage ended in divorce. Um, there was, uh, some allegations of abuse that happened. And, um, my most recent background check on you has, doesn't reveal that doesn't show that. So that tells me that when you told me that that charge had been dismissed, the background check seems to support that. So, um, I'm not going to get into the details of it. I'm not going to say, you know, we believe her. We don't believe her. None of us were there. She made some allegations that happened. There's a police report that was out there. It's not currently showing on your record. So that's it. That's all I know about it right now. Wow. So, um, so I, I put this as, as you saw, I put this out on, on Instagram, um, and on Facebook that I was going to be interviewing you and if people have questions for you and you saw some of them and okay, shoot. <laughs> people want to know what she's doing now that you know she, of. I think she's probably in Italy with her new 24 year old boyfriend. I can't, I don't know if he's unemployed or not. Um, if he's a part-time model, he doesn't have much of an Instagram following which means if if you're a model and you don't have much of an Instagram following, I would say that you're not modeling too much. Okay. Just, uh, so, do you know so what she's I, doing? She's living with his parents. In um, in Italy. In Italy. Do you now, know what she's doing? Is she going to school? Does she working? Do you, do you know? Um, I have no idea. Okay. But she and I have exchanged some email this year regarding her okay. mail. Okay. Uh, regarding her financial situation, which is not so good, she uh, she was able to uh, she got a school loan to stay in the uh, dorms on that last year at USF. Okay. So, so she's got a few situations here in America that she needs to clean up if she ever comes ever comes back. Okay, so that's what she's up to. What are you up to? What Five foot doing? six, hundred sixty pounds. Jesus. <laughs> no, uh, I finally got my promotion there in the army. Are you doing army um, stuff full time, or is that still your part time um, gig? It was almost far, uh, part uh, full time. I was doing. I'm doing funerals, but that stopped this month. So I'm going to do something else, like uh, jump on a deployment next year. Um, I have some freedom with that. Um, with my promotion, I can I can take a, a spot that's one up or one down. So it gives okay. me a little flexibility okay. when it comes to the needs of the Army. Okay. Um, okay. I'm still doing the eBay thing. Uh, that's still making some good money. You know, I sold a, an Eden Pure uh, floor heater today, uh, Bose Radio. Um, so you never, you never know what you're going to sell and how much money you're going to make per day. And... Um, Oh, and the, the snack thing we stopped a year ago. It's a long story, but sometimes things work out. Sometimes Sounds things don't riveting. work out. Um, yeah. So a lot of people want to know why you're such a misogynistic douchebag. Is kind of a lot of the questions. <laughs> why am I a misogynist? No, Kasi would say you're a violent, abusive, sexist, racist, misogynistic homophobe. Okay. She's probably not entirely wrong. You are misogynistic but, kind of douchebag sometimes. Um, but you know what? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one hell of a. I'm one. I'm one hell of a guy, though. Uh, okay. No, well, you know um, what? But I wanted to. I wanted to love her. Um, I, I wanted to love her and take care of her. Um, but uh, she wasn't ready for a relationship of any kind. Um, I didn't well, she know. Probably, she probably wanted a relationship not to be treated as a piece of property, but you know. Potato, potato. And you're saying I treated her because um, I wanted to. I wanted to thank you once in a while if I ever did something pretty. Because you're pretty, keeping score about, like your contribution is. Well, I paid for your makeover and I paid for your sushi and. I just and wanted to thank that. you once in a while. Well, then you know, there's a different level of that. Like there's a, like a different level of partnership when you know you, when you treat your marriage like a scorecard like 
like she's a piece of property that you get to dictate what to do. Okay. I, I wanted to thank you once in a while for four <laughs> years. And thank you. I wanted to have sex on my birthday. I never got it. <laughs> How about okay. that? Right. Sorry. Took and her to you know, Key West. So she should have had, you took her to Key West. So therefore she owed you sex. Is that what you're saying? Um, for a 40th birthday. You took her to Key West, so she owed you sex. Okay. As long as that's clear, that's on the record. We've got that, you guys. Somebody asked what I didn't what say he, yes or no to that. He didn't, yeah, he didn't deny it. Somebody asked, um, wanted to know what your outlook is on, on love and relationships now. Um, well, I'm not ruling. I, I, the, my, the show still airs. The season still airs in other countries. Mm -hmm. And um, let's just say that I have. Do you have a fan base? Uh, I do. I have my groupies. <laughs> Everybody on the show has their own groupies. They do. They do. Uh, they, they may morph into friends. They may move into um, all kinds of categories. Everybody has a label. Um, but I also see, you know, my markability with the American woman versus, let's just say, the Brazilian woman. And I've been trying to figure out why are they so why are they so different? Because I have I have a list, a checklist. You know, everybody has a checklist. Mm -hmm. like, you know, like a woman says, you know what? I want a guy who actually has a job. I'm sick and tired of Not dating. Not too much to ask. Unemployed. I want un I don't want an unemployed, tatted up, fucking meth head, uh, who's a who's a wannabe DJ. I had him last year, and he was great sex, but he was just a loser. Okay. Okay. I hear that all the time. Bad boy. I want a guy with a job. Okay. So what's right? your what's your checklist? You know, I, I want to you know maybe twenty five to forty years old, educated professional woman. Uh, you know, somewhat attractive, maybe attractive woman, well put together. Um, you know, if if she has a child or two, it depends on that situation. You know, is she unemployed? Is she chasing child support? Does she have several baby daddy? Um, you know, is she too proud to go after the exes for child support? I mean, all kinds of things. So I'm not totally ruling out women with children. Mm -hmm. I mean, at my age, you know, they say, oh. She's too attractive for you. You should lower your standards. I'm like, Jesus Christ, she has four kids. I can't even afford, I can barely afford gas for the car, let alone four kids. Come on. Okay. okay. So you find these women in Brazil that fall for your... Um, no, they don't your... fall. They, they, I, don't, I don't search them. I mean, you know, people reach out to me. Oh, okay. So there's just this like... I don't... The, the 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 Jason Hitch fan fan club is headquartered in Brazil. It appears because you were telling me recently that you um, had done a couple of trips to Brazil recently. Um, um, I I may have done one, just one. You know, okay, she's she's a, she's a she's a friend of mine now. Uh huh. You know we're not a label, oh. um, but she's a college educated professional woman. It's a hell of a uh, long way to fly for a booty call. Um, but we spent uh, time with each other to, to get to know each other to see if we had a, a you know if we were clicking and uh, if there was a spark. Um, and um, you know she's still a friend of mine. She's doing her own thing. I'm doing my thing. We we talk once in a while. But okay. uh, it, it wasn't that expensive actually to fly down there. A uh, round trip ticket was five hundred bucks. Well, send her um, my contact information. I'd love to talk to her and get her side of the story. See if she has the same uh, version of events. It. Let me think about that. Mm, no. <laughs> no? Damn it. So, um, but no, I, I'm, I'm not doing that every every six weeks. You know, um, you know, Colt, Colt beat me to it. He's doing the happily ever after he went down there. Um, yeah. And apparently, apparently That's producers also. found out. Um, they found out I had, a, I had a lady friend down there at the beginning of the year. And, uh. And I'm like, well, they haven't called me yet. But um, 
No, no, she's a, she's a she's a nice young woman, and um, we're we're not a label. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Okay, okay. Um, somebody wants to know what is with all the videos, the tongue thing he does at all of them. What do you do what with do you your mean? tongue like in your that? videos? Maybe, yes. maybe, yeah. Oh. Maybe. Is that um, it? I'm oh, sorry. This is, you know, he's sticking his tongue out, basically. Um, no, I, I, I guess I, I accidentally do it. It's just a, 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 a nervous habit before I go, before I video myself. I mean, my, my lips get salty, perhaps, and I go like this. I just... <laughs> I, <laughs> Okay. Um, I'll have to, I mean, I'm going to commit that to memory and think, oh, what, what, what am I going to do now? So um, people also want to know, uh, you're, are you still living with your father or no? Uh, he and I are still roommates. Okay. So you are still, all, okay. Of our, all of our poodles uh, died, though. And oh. Frank passed away. Oh. Every, every dog you saw on the show has passed away. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, so somebody wants to know, do you regret your decision to bring Cassia to the States? Uh, no, I don't regret marrying her. Okay. I don't, I don't regret doing the show. Okay. Um, I do have a few regrets during the time I was married to her. Um, I have since uh, grown up as a, uh, as a, as a man, a roommate, uh, uh, son, brother, nephew, husband, the whole bit. Uh, Cassia um, really knocked some sense into me. And um, though she um, feels like she gave it her all to the relationship, um, I, I made a couple of, of mistakes that I have to uh, live with. I tried, uh, I've, I've regretted them. I've tried to, uh, to be remorseful and I've tried to find a remedy when I hurt somebody. And I have mentioned to Cassia many times that those are the three R's when somebody fucks up. Um, so she could take it for what it was worth. And she wanted to trade up. If she viewed it as that, I don't know what she was thinking. Um, I can assume, you know, certain things like I don't think she's happy or, um, I, you know, I, it, it was hard to get her talking about her feelings from the minute she was even in America. So, you know, knowing her for seven years. I kind of thought that I knew her more than anybody else, even her own mother. And um, I'm just disappointed that she would say that I was the best salesman that she's ever met. But yet when I pitched her something, she didn't want to buy it anymore. And I guess my heart got broken. Oh, well, that sounds like uh, probably a good note to end this on. Um, the lessons that you've learned over the years, not that you got your heart broken. We don't want to end it on a sad note, but, you know, um, ladies, you are single right now, right? So, so ladies, if you, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I have a. Uh... You know, as, as, as women have a gentleman caller, they, you know, women always have options. Um, I don't want to consider anybody an option. I want to meet the right partner. You know, Kasi has, has taught me that she and I were from two different worlds. And I tried my darndest to try to infiltrate, to try to get into those cracks that she didn't want to open up. Pardon the pun, literally and figuratively, because she and I didn't have much of a sexual relationship. And, um, but right now, I want to find the right partner for me. And the only way that you can do that is basically to date, is to 
Yep. Screen and vet women that meet your basic categories. And obviously you want to have a few, a mutual physical attraction. You want to communicate well, you want to have some shared values and it has to be good timing for the two of you. And logistically speaking, you need to, um, to be right there and meshing because I've seen, I, I've had a lot of uh, potential relationships thinking, my God, this girl is perfect for me and we're clicking, but logistically speaking, God, she's 4,000 miles away. I'm so you need somebody. Not gonna like, need somebody I mean, I, I want to, I wanted to meet an American, but I also realized that I'm going to keep my options open. I'm not going to, I've met a lot of good Brazilian women that have, that are professional women that have a degree, they live alone, they, uh, you know, they're not 21 years old. I met Kasi when she was 21. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're oh, 43, so. Yeah, I mean, there was a reason why Kasia resented uh, the, the nine to five. She wanted to go to college. She missed going, uh, drinking and, and having pizza at 3 a.m. Um, yeah. And then when she went down, when she went down to USF and partied, she realized that she hated it. How about that? Okay. Well, you know, I mean, we all need to sow our oats, so to speak, and figure that all out. And that's sort of the time in your life where you figure that out. And she figured out that, you know, what the rest of us figured out watching you guys on TV, that you was just, you, you're you not a match. And, um, you know, that happens, you know, it's your starter marriage, as it were. So... Um, I just wanted to, you know, finish this up by thanking you for taking taking the time out here and for popping in and answering some of those questions on uh, the Instagram. I do appreciate you sitting down with me, even if I'm yelling at you, and I will continue to berate you for being a misogynistic dick. But, you know, that's what what good debate is for, right? So, ladies, he's single. If you're in, if you're Brazilian with a job. And professional and no baggage and you live in florida and you have a hankering for 64 dollars of sushi or to fly to key west with the expectation of sex in return jason's your man so thank on you jason birthday. on your birthday <laughs> so thank you again jason for joining me uh, thanks for having me i'll talk to you later have a happy new year and a merry christmas thank you okay i'm still triggered I think I'm still like in a corner, shaking in the fetal position after that conversation. <laughs> Your reactions, you're like, "Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious?" <laughs> One, I'm like, "Only sixty dollars for sushi? Where did you go?" <laughs> yeah, right. What the hell is that about? And and the audacity of expecting the expectation that she should put out because he flew her to Key West for his birthday. So she, she owed him birthday sex, right? Birthday sex is earned. It's earned. (laughs) He doesn't understand that. You can't buy it. And he doesn't realize how misogynistic he is and how he views women as property. But good luck to him. Right. He's single. And he he also uh, was kind of talking about how the American market doesn't see him. I'm ad living as the idea, you know, fan. Mm-hmm. Really right. Like, so that seems to be a trend, right? Just kind of like, well, they're maybe, not putting up with my bullshit. So douche doesn't translate. The, the, gets lost in translation somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, anyway. All right. So enough with that. Uh, next week we will have um, hopefully a little bit more uplifting interview. I'm going to be interviewing a uh, Dean of Tarek and Dean. Oh my God. Uh, since that's exciting. Since being kicked off pillow talk, he <sighs> is going to share. So that will be next week's interview. So I'm excited about that. Ready to start closing out. Some I think shout I outs. Know. Yeah. Let's go to some All shout right. outs. Okay. Let's go through the Rolodex, right? Dun, dun, dun. These are the shout outs from the dump you can find on talkersoffraud.com and there's a box there you fill it out and it sends us an email so what do we got perfect so we are starting with selena and her message was just one to say you found the perfect co-host oh you guys just mesh so well together sending love from florida 
Oh, thank you. I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you said that because she's <laughs> on board now. So Yay. She wasn't the perfect co-host. We'd have a problem. You asked, we did. All right. Glad, you glad. You- <laughs> All right. Next. Next is, um, from love struck. The message is just listened to the hot boxer interview and discovered you're also from the San Francisco Bay area represent. Go giants. Yep, born and raised in San Francisco Bay. San Francisco. I've not been there. Um, Next, we have Lori. Lori says, hi, I do follow you, but I'm a quiet person who observes, and I know the show is new. uh, The show is out, but the burning question is, where is Tim? Did he fall off the planet, and what is his story? Can you do some digging on it? Has he slid out of sight because everyone is looking elsewhere? What's the deal? (laughs) I think everyone's <laughs> questioning that. This He's is literally just the back. Yeah. Of the, media. I mean, <laughs> this is a question I get a lot, which is kind of interesting. I did get some news is that Tim and Veronica will be joining Pillow Talk. Seriously? So we'll, we'll get to see them. Yeah, they'll be joining the cast. I, I can't. All right. Let's, All right. Well, last one. Then. <laughs> last one's from Lauren. Her message is, I love you and HLM, hetero life mate. You are the first podcast I ever listened to, probably showing my age, and I'm hooked. I love your outlook on things and how you make sure the tea is 100% facts before you spill. Thank you, Lauren. I really appreciate that sentiment. And I we do try. We here at the podcast do try very carefully to make sure what we're giving out is accurate. And if it's not 100% verified... We'd like to make sure we tell you that, too. Mm-hmm. So, well, uh, if you guys have things that you want to say, if you have questions, if you have concerns, comments, anything, you can send us a message on the dump, talkersoffraud.com. Hopefully that will change soon. I do have the rights to the fraudcast.com. So once Yay. I get that website built and up and running, we'll be, we'll be good. So I'm excited about that. But for now, it's talkersoffraud.com. You can find us on Facebook at the Fraudcasters. Search in groups. You will be able to find us. We're there. And then you can find me on Instagram at Frauded by TLC. You can find the show at the Fraudcast. And they can find you at uh, cactus underscore fruit underscore juice on Instagram. And she is also taking up this, uh, <laughs> the Lord's work for us. <laughs> Lord's work. Where she where she is clicking the clickbait so you don't have to. <laughs> so much. fits right in perfectly with <laughs> with the theme of the show. All of that clickbait that you see on every on the cast member stories. Freaking swipe. She's ups clicking all that and bio. Yep. Right. These big sensational headlines and then the article isn't anything like the headline. She's boiling that all down. She's giving you the summaries and she has it all on her page. So go and give her a follow so that she can give you can get all of that. Uh, don't click the bait. She's clicking so you don't have to. And I am frauded by TLC and I'm dumpster diving so you don't have to. You can find your fraudcaster on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at frauded by TLC and on the web at talkersoffraud.com. This broadcast has been produced and edited by yours truly, art by Sarah Daudi. Music written, produced, and performed by Umami. Segment producer at iHeart Reality TV Shows. Further assistance provided by many unnamed fraud consultants.